Hello everybody, Andrew here with Shields in St. Cloud. Today we're gonna to be talking about line selection. I got a couple samples of suffix line in front of me, but keep in mind what I'm talking about today is applied to all line brands, whether it's gonna be something from the Berkeley line, if it's gonna be P line, if it's gonna be any other company, Strike King makes you know, a great line. You can add anything that I'm saying here to those lines as well, because all it is is just gonna be the technology behind the line. So we'll start off with the Suffix 832, which is gonna be a braided line, which is one of my go-tos for a long time. I have nothing against any other company. I got a lot of Berkeley, their X9 and X5 line, which is very comparable to the Suffix 832. This line, what you gain is a very smooth line. It's gonna be one that's castable in both bait casters and spinning rods. It's gonna be jiggable so that you can actually go out there and just do jigging wraps if you want, ripping wraps if you wanna do jerk baits for bass. If you wanna target anything in rocks, it's gonna be durable enough because what they do is they add in a gore fiber. And on the back of the package here, they kinda of outline it with a white line there. That gore fiber, what that does is it allows that line to be more durable and add strength. It basically allows less stretch, so there's no stretch to the braid, and that makes it so that it will pull through rocks if you get snagged up. If you get in a weed, you can bank on that line to hold that lure on, and you can pull it through without snapping off. I use this line on a spinning rod. Typically, I'm gonna run six pound to 15 pound line. On a baitcaster rod, I'm gonna typically go a little bit heavier. I'll range anywhere from 20 pound to 65 pound. If I'm going for bass that are in thick cover or more of a finesse style with like a Senko or a Texas rig, I'll lighten it up a little bit. So highly recommend this for anybody beginning out or someone who's just an avid angler. You cannot go wrong with 832s from Suffix. Going into the Suffix Advance, this line is new the last two years. It's been one of our best-selling monofilament lines just because it's a hypercopolymer based line. What that means is it's gonna fish like a monofilament with having the forgiveness and the stretch, but it's also gonna have the strength behind like a braid without the um, aggressiveness of the braid. So it's a good combination between the two of them. You can pair braid with any of these lines as far as a leader goes for added forgiveness and stretch so that you get the best of both worlds. This line we sell really popular at the St. Cloud location because we have a wide variety of fish species around there. So we get guys going from panfish to bass to pike to um, walleyes all in the same line um, selection there, just different poundages. Going over to the Suffix Elite, this one's been a staple for a long time. It's gonna be just our standard monofilament line their monofilament line is gonna be high stretch, big forgiveness, so if you're using it for a full spool, if you're using it as leader material, you have the versatility to do whatever you want with it. So it doesn't matter if you're targeting things shallow, deep, you can get a full spool of this, and the diameter is a lot thinner than what some other lines are out there on the market, so you can fill up your spool with knowing you got enough line to fish anywhere that you want in the lake. When you get into the Suffix Advanced fluorocarbon line, fluorocarbon is gonna be a stiffer line. It's gonna be one that I use mostly as leader material, but some people will use this in a full spool on their bass setups. What you gain with that is fluorocarbon is completely invisible in the water. You can't see it. It's gonna be more inconspicuous, so all that fish has to focus on is your lure. All you can do is just work the action, let that lure do the trick. You don't have to think twice about, are they seeing my line? Am I being too aggressive? None of that matters anymore. It's only about that presentation that you have in the water. But what fluorocarbon gives you as a leader material is that stiffness. So as you're casting a jerk bait, if you're doing crank baits, if you're doing something simple as a jig and wrap, adding that onto a braid allows you to have the no forgiveness on the braid line but then adding that forgiveness back in when you set the hook for the fluorocarbon. It's gonna be a stiffer line so that your hooks don't get followed up on your line or in the water when you're letting that line out. So I use these in conjunction a lot for multi ranges of um, techniques. A benefit to going away from a full carbon spool is gonna be that memory. 
Memory is something that every fisherman wants to get away from. They don't like it. It causes you to have knots, whether it's a wind knot or you know just an overlapping knot because that line physically fell off your spool. I've had that happen with too heavy a pound test fluorocarbon. So for those of you that really want to dial in and go full fluorocarbon, I would say stick to something lighter weight. Go with a 10 pound to 12 pound. Don't go as high as 15 or 20 pound if you find it. Save those for leader materials. Typically when I'm doing leaders, I'm running anywhere from a 12 to 20 pound leader. I go that heavy because it is invisible, but it's also gonna allow me to go through those rocks, the weeds that are a little bit more abrasive. And as I'm bass fishing or walleye fishing, those bass and walleyes, bass lips are very hard on line. They're gonna cause a lot of little nicks and tears in that line, even in fluorocarbon or braided line and even monofilament line to where I wanna retie often enough that I don't lose a fish because I was too um, negligent to try and retie. I just was in too big of a hurry where this will allow me to catch five, 10 fish before retying. And sometimes when I retie, I'll just do a three to five foot leader and I'll just snip off six inches at a time. What that allows me to do is instead of retying my knot or my swivel, I just have to retie my hook or lure on to save time and get back out in the water and get back fishing. A lot of people ask us in the store, how do we tie our line on? Are we doing a swivel? Are we doing a snap? Are we doing just a knot to tie them together? Are you making up your own knot when doing it? All I'm doing is I'm skipping the swivel, skipping the snap. I'm just going right to a uni to uni or a double blood knot, which is basically two slip knots that come together. It's a very easy knot to learn how to tie, but all it is is just looping your ends together, making those knots slide together. It's a less intrusive knot, so you're able to allow it to slide through your guides. Whether you're retrieving or casting, it's not gonna beat them up, whether they're ceramic guides or recoil guides, but it allows you to still maintain a good distance in your cast as well with little limited friction. So keep in mind what I talked about today doesn't just apply to suffix, but it will apply to all line brands in general so that you can go out on the water and make sure you're making the right decision for your application of fishing. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask any of your local Shields experts at your local Shields store or feel free to contact us on shields.com.